YouTube. We're here with the ASH-26. We've done the hardest part of the build, which is the same part it's going to be no matter what step we're on. It's called waiting. At this point we've waited. All this stuff is set up. It's very sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's going to give or break off. The foam is embedded in there nicely for the rear. The front half is fully assembled. The only thing I was going to do real quick was just put a little bit of this um, baby powder on here so that if it's got a little bit of softness and stickiness left, it's been plenty of time. It shouldn't really be sticky, but you know, just one of those things. I live in Realityville here. So it may say that you can handle it after 24 hours, but I still, I'm not going to trust that. That stuff can get rinsed off with water if I really cared. But for now, we've got it nice and slick now because the baby powder just blown off the excess. I don't want to make a huge mess. And then uh, I've got just a little bit of material that must have got transferred from my gloves onto this. So I don't know if I'll take some plastic to, or some uh, Windex or what and just try to clean it off. But I want to show you the fit. Okay. So you got the ASH. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is kind of nerve-wracking. The pin goes in. And it seems pretty tight. Ow. It's tight. Okay. And I pull back the release. And I slip it forward. Oh, ho, ho, yes. Look at that smooth transition. That's no joke, guys. That's really good. I'm happy with that. Back here, it looks like we're right where we need to be. It's not as smooth in the back, but still smooth enough. As you can see, we've got just a, just a touch of height we could take out of there. And then up here, we're just smooth as can be. This is where I'm more, more concerned. And just look how sweet that looks. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And of course, you can release. You can release the canopy. By pulling this back and then lifting the rear end. You just have to be careful to remember to lift at a pretty steep angle. And that's going to take it out of the slop. And the only thing I don't like is you see how it's sticky? Well, that's because this stuff is still tender. As this gets harder with time, that tendency should go away. The other thing I could do is I could take a reamer and ream any imperfections from that little area. Now that we know we have a perfectly good fit, this has not been a step I've been real excited about. It's been scary. And uh, now I can get back to a more conventional type of build situation. Because this thing was a nightmare. Way harder than I thought it was going to be to do that hatch release. This thing was actually not so bad. That was, uh, that was not near as hard as I thought it might be. Given I did it after the, the release. So we're just going to, for the moment, we'll just set this aside. And let's talk about what our next steps are going to be. As you can see here, I've got this, this wire here that's not terminated. And I have this wire here, which is also not terminated. That's going to be for the elevator. The elevator servo is actually mounted in the horizontal stabilizer. This hole was already cut for me. I've seen many guys do uh, different methods for that. And those methods are really nice. But for me, it was already kind of laid in my lap that way. Um, and of course, the servo for the rudder is going to be mounted up front. Obviously, we got to get the motor mounted. we got the ESC. So there's a bunch of different steps that we could do next. And I am really excited to see the motor on this and potentially have the fuselage done, which would be really cool. Um, at which point, then we'll know... 
some different factors like obviously we have some flexibility on where servos are going to end up okay so I'm choosing to wait on that the landing gear I'm choosing to wait on the landing gear getting that glued in currently it's just taped in okay so these choices I'm making are going to help us to prevent having something mounted in a position that's going to prevent us getting something that we need in a different position and then having to redo our work. So I think the next step for us is going to be to try to figure out if we can get that motor mounted. And so that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to go grab it. Okay, so the motor currently is sitting on this mount. We have the hardware over here and there would have been some screws for mounting that and the screws are actually inside on the mount itself so we'll have to detach the spinner mechanism we obviously aren't going to need the load tester anymore for this and the receiver doesn't have to be plugged in and the ESC this is all made it up we'll just grab the whole thing take it in there kind of heavy so I want to be careful with it okay so we're gonna take this over to the bench start disassembly um, one thing I'm noticing is that these colors are gonna be pretty hard to differentiate here that one's red that one's blue but the blue didn't transfer very good into the white letters so I'm gonna color the white letters with the blue and then I should be able to distinguish those colors so I can go ahead and unplug these now that we have those labeled, and of course there's one that's supposed to be green. I don't know why I did that, because it's hard enough to distinguish which one's which. So maybe what I'll do is just grab a little bit of this green color and blue color and just wrap it around. We can always take this off later. We don't need this permanently. It's just until we kind of get our wits about us when everything's mounted but it's better than having the motor go the wrong way obviously that can be corrected but this will be the easiest method even if it is temporary not a big deal that is if the tape will stick to itself guess we got that on there then we'll do a little bit of blue where is the blue I guess we're onto this roll of blue, which is humongous. Just grab a little bit of this. And we have yellow as well, so we'll do a little bit of yellow too. I think I was reluctant to mark these with tape just for the simple fact that it's it's gonna be removed anyway. And I don't want to add weight. But let's just be honest, guys, at a certain point. It's not that big a deal. Okay, and then we have uh, the first color was red. Okay, so we'll come back in here and grab some red. Yellow was just the color of the wires on the ESC. Let's take a little bit of this. This is vinyl electrical tape. Nothing fancy about it. Not, not designed for this application necessarily, but it's been pretty good stuff. My little test, my little bench test here was uh, very reassuring as to I wasn't wasting my time, which is important to me. I don't know about you guys, but on a plane that's important to me, I don't want to be compromising a lot. So we'll just get that loosened up so we can pop those out. Actually, we'll just pop these screws out all together. I might use this little bench test platform for something else later. That did work nice. I'm surprised that I can't just pull them through, but they're a little bit too big. Let's pop those things out. Alright guys, so we got those markings transposed, 
and um, what I have here is I have this side marked as blue and you see how it's got a, a blue mark there and then this one's not marked I forgot I need a I think it's a five millimeter Allen wrench whatever this Allen wrench is I don't think it's marked so this came with the Emacs motor or maybe it came with a spinner I can't remember either way it came with it one of the two okay so we'll just loosen that this has already been very well vetted for balance and this collet has been opened up I actually bought one that's the correct size look at that beautiful motor there guys this is so economical too okay so you see that's a screw that black one's the screw that came with the the motor those two just kept it from tipping I'll go for this screwdriver So if you guys are following this project from start to finish, let me start by saying thanks for doing that. Um, a lot of steps in this process. I mean, these ARFs take a lot more work than uh, just a regular plug and fly or bind and fly, which kind of goes without saying. Sometimes it's hard to kind of appreciate how much work that's going to be. Okay, so these have that, these are pan heads, and they're more of like a wood screw, and then these are machine screws, and they have the countersink, so they're very easy to distinguish from one another. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pop all those out for now. Oops. What we need to do is we need to establish what two strikes you're gone, evidently. We have to establish what screws we're going to use to hold this into the plane. Because this mount is not going to be what we're using to hold this motor system in. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first, first things first, which by the way, this thing is very light. It's made of aluminum, I believe very lightweight paint I'm trying to be careful about putting that down where there might be metal fragments I don't want to get them into the coils on the motor because they'd get picked up by the magnets on the stator if I'm saying that right okay first of all this is the first time I've had this disassembled so before we stick this into the nose of the plane let's take a look at what we have for some small hardware. Alright, so this is the screw we're trying to duplicate. And the reason we're trying to duplicate it is because my motor mount is flat, not countersunk. We can't countersink it because it's just going to be way too thin. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to find, I guess this isn't helping too much anyway. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find a bolt that's about this size, except it's not countersunk. It has to be the same exact size, which, wowzers. That may have possibly been the first bolt I touched. What are the chances, right? Um, what the heck is that? It's triangular? The screw has like three sides. That's very weird. That is nuts because it actually fits. Are you kidding me? The first screw I picked up, what are the chances? Okay, so well, I've got one screw, but my ideal installation will have the same exact screws times four, okay? Hey, look at this. I have a kit with some screws in there. That might be better because they're M38. 
That could be what they are. Ooh, I've got a bunch over here that are already opened. Because once you use the one that's in the bag, you'll forget what size they are. Okay, so let's try this, guys. This is like a Christmas miracle here. Are you kidding me? There's just a little bit of slop in there. I think the slop's going to go bye-bye when I actually tighten these. Um, okay, so there's one trick. If you don't already know this trick, you're probably not building the plane. Made up the threads. Let's see if they mesh. Trust me, you'll know. Because they will or they won't. See, that meshes. That is correct. Now, let's grab the first one. That also meshes. But you guys see how that's triangular shaped? I'm not nuts, it's actually a triangle. I wonder if that's to hold more Loctite or something like that. Well, whatever the case, I think that's what I'm gonna get. I like that these are black because they would match the motor, but you're not going to see this anyway. So I'm just going to go with the stainless steel. I believe there's just stainless steel, which is pretty sweet. <clears throat> the reason I don't know the size on these is because I got these from a buddy who was doing quads. And he's trying to kind of, he was trying to get away from it. He was doing quads, and he's not so much getting out of the quads, but he was getting out of the airplanes. Which, to me, is like, you know, sacrilege, but whatever. If you're into quads, you're into quads, you know? Nothing wrong with that. So now I just need to find an appropriate-sized Allen wrench. Look at that. Guys, it's like Christmas Day. It's a Christmas miracle, because I've got all these things lining up. What are the chances, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry fit this all the way down and make sure that there's no possibility that that could go through and, dam and damage itself because I'm not going to be able to see once it's in the plane, okay? So you got those. We'll put these over here. Those are going to go where the motor came from. This extra weird triangular one's going to go back in here unless we have problems. Do we have any lock washers? Hmm. No. Um, I'm just curious real quick before we continue. Will these black anodized ones work? Yes, they also work. But they're probably a little bit heavier. Okay, I'm happy with what I got, so we're gonna do it like that. Now I'm gonna pause and uh, probably get some Loctite going on these. All right guys, I wanna show you something I'm concerned about. As you can see, this is the motor mount, right? And not 100% sure what material that's exactly made of. But my concern is, I'm not 100% certain that Loctite is not going to adversely impact its performance. Whether it means that the Loctite is going to damage it by breaking it down, or the Loctite is going to damage it by eating the product. Either way, I'm not willing to go through it. So I'm going to use a different method. Instead of Loctite, I'm gonna probably go with a drip of CA. This is not foam safe. I know it won't damage the metal, and I know I'll be able to overwhelm the pressure by using a tool to remove it. However, you can damage your threads if you get too aggressive, so don't overdo it. All right guys, sorry about the interruption there. We had a phone call, and when the weather's good, you fly and I'm gonna be flying today so I gotta reach this in and I want the leads to go down so just looking at the way that these leads are going I guess it's gonna go this way or it's gonna go that way and I honestly can't say that there's one way versus the other that's better because it looks like we can exit for the rudder on either side the one servo goes this way so maybe I'll go that way 
like I said, it really shouldn't matter which way we go. So I've got an idea on how to feed this through and we'll do that to execute our plan. We'll grab this bent tip forceps and I'm just gonna reach in there. And that's gonna allow me the opportunity to grab the shaft of the motor and just guide it in gently. Okay. Now, obviously, need to turn so that the leads are lined up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to temp one of these in without any glue, okay? Because I just need to get it to be held in position first. And then we'll fight with glue after that. So I'm going to go into the motor mount with the screw. And it's really awkward, of course. I knew this step would be pretty bad. I'm just trying to get it to bite. This is one of those times in the model building where you're like, crap, I wish I had four hands. I'm gonna grab the leads, which should spin the motor, mount. Okay, now I pivoted it over. Just really hard to tell if I'm getting a bite. Feels like I might be, maybe, might be. Nope, I'm not, because obviously this shaft isn't centered. So I'm going to grab onto this with my forceps so it's clamped on. That's going to help to counterweight it down. I'm going to get these screws going, hopefully. So you can see why I didn't want to do uh, glue on this first one, because it's just going to be impossible to get everything to align properly first. Gosh, it feels like it's starting, but it's not. Why is it not starting? What am I doing wrong here? Oh, I'm not lined up with the hole yet. I'm almost lined up with the hole. Come on. Spin, you little turd. strange it feels like it should be lined up but it's clearly not okay we're not okay so now the trick of the day is going to be to get a second screwdriver possibly a second pair of forceps we'll go for second screwdriver and then a piece of wood and then we'll grab the rest of the screws might as well have those over there uh, we're probably gonna end up putting glue in after we've got better control of this motor of course like we talked about earlier okay so don't damage your coils getting in a hurry guys just take your time okay there's the hole I gotta spin it around some see the shaft can spin but that doesn't change the position of the the holes for the motor and that's the challenge it's always the challenge Okay, that's too big. So we're gonna try a non-conductive material that's sharp on the end. It's not about worrying about shorting anything out electrically, but you don't wanna damage anything. Okay, I see the hole lined up. Like I said, once we get the first one going, it should be pretty smooth sailing, I hope. All right, guys, I'm in. I'm in it, in it to win it here. Now I'm gonna have to grab a second screw. Now I'm not gonna use any kicker. I'm just gonna use this. I might, might apply it with a Q-tip. Okay, so just lay this down. Turn on the light. Just looking, looks like we're very close. Where are the other holes, guys? 
Or did I thread into something that's actually not a hole? That's a good way to get in trouble. Um, okay, so I need to move it over. There we go. Okay. So now I have alignment. Second screw. Boy, this is going to be a bear. I can already tell. I knew this would be a bear, but I didn't, I didn't really think how bad of a bear it's going to be until you're out there doing it. I'm really lucky I had somebody to do this, building this motor mount for me, guys. I was so fortunate. Oh, yes. Okay, so that one's in there. So now, you can see it's going to be aligned. You can see the bearing right in the middle. Now I can take and go ahead and... I wonder if I can just drop this in behind. Yeah, that'll backlight it just enough. Yep, that's going to pull it tight. It's going to do exactly what I need it to do. Now I can come back and grab the shaft deeper and let the pliers push up against there. I got this. Just got to be really careful not to cross thread any of these screws, guys, because you could easily do it. Not because of the any impropriety of the boater, just because of the nature of the insertion point. Okay, oh, this is so cool. I'm so excited to see how this is going to turn out. You can see my motor mount's glowing. That's kind of cool. Okay, now this is hypothetically the last hole. So I'm going to go ahead and get a drip of glue. One drip. One drip. Nothing more. Nothing less. Of course. The woes of CA. I love to hate you, CA. Okay. Okay, so you see how it's dripping out the top? That's super annoying under normal circumstances. But today that'd be kind of nice if you were, you could just lay it there and you could tap the side of it there while you've got a screw on there. Of course, I, I just can't waste it. Even though I just bought an eight ounce bottle of it the other day. Okay, so one big drip right on the tip. That's all she wrote. Now you could use paint. You could use Elmer's glue. You could use a variety of other um, glues and there'd be nothing wrong with that either guys seriously it feels tight right now and it's making me nervous not because I'm nervous about the, the glue but because the surface area it's very difficult to know if it's the glue or if it's just because I'm run up against the head okay I think I'm almost there this is kind of a nerve-wracking moment because this is something that I can't fix really easily myself without learning a new method, okay? So I'm almost tight. I don't want to overdo it because we got glue on there and it is tight. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the top one. I would do a star pattern except there's only four. So in this case, I'm just going to start with the top and bottom. Same thing I did before, one drip of glue right along the front edge of the threads. Just like that, okay? No kicker. You don't want it to set up while you're screwing it in the hole. That would be no fun at all. That one went in better, which leads me to believe I might have had just a touch of cross thread going on on that first one which would be a bummer but you know what at this point it's a little too late 
Okay, so you notice I'm going to run into the side of this nose as this backs out, okay? That's just life in the big city, okay? One thing I may have to do is I may have to grind that down just to make a little bit more clearance, but we're going to try it without. One drip, just like before. And I bumped in the shaft there, but I didn't get any glue on it. You'll want to be careful not to do that, because getting glue on the shaft there would be counterproductive. You'll just have to scrape it off. Okay, so we made the turn neatly, meaning we went in, and then we had to turn slightly, okay? So we're not cross-threading. Oh yeah, it's feeling really good. Oh, this is so exciting. I know it's probably not for you guys, but I've been looking at this thing sitting on that motor mount for months. And for me, the only thing that takes months is for babies to be born. My airplanes are usually here and gone by the time months have passed around. Because I fly them. Not because I'm a horrible pilot. Although I'm sure some of you probably think that. <laughs> okay, so this time I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it started because I have less flexibility than I did. Alright, so this time I've just got a little bit less flexibility in terms of how I'm going to do this because the motor can't move at all. So now I may have to do the thing I was talking about earlier where I take and just shave out a little bit of that material there. Um, either that or I can try to walk it in and just get lucky. See, I feel cross-threading. I feel as though I'm cross-threading. So I have to really hold it over to get those threads to line up. And I'm I'm feeling that tendency to cross-thread here and I am nervous that I am going to cross-thread pretty bad. So now that we know what's going on, oh man, that's going to be scary. Oh yeah, I got a little cross threadage going on. I'm going to switch this one out for another one of the same size, which I had a bunch of them over here luckily. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this one. The one that was mixed up I'll put over with the rest of the motor stuff. And then I'm going to um, probably grab my drill and I'm gonna find a drill bit that's very small like about the size of the bolts I could probably use the Phillips bit like that now this is gonna be a very scary thing to do but I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna have success says me so I'm holding the chuck just behind the chuck You see what I'm doing? I'm just slowly removing just a touch of material. <sighs> and that touch of material will allow me to get that head lined up straightly. <sighs> okay. So now, Hopefully we could get this in there without having trouble now. But it still looks like we're going to probably be having some trouble. Let's see if it'll go. Alright, it's going this time. Okay, I need to take a little bit more material out.
Okay, so now that that material is out, I should have an easier time getting in there. Okay, so we got the screw. We're gonna put a little glue on there, just a touch on the tip. Running it backward, then running it forward and pulling it tight to the wall. Running it forward, but pulling it tight to the wall. Okay. It is what it is at this point. If it's cross-threaded, it's cross-threaded. Um, which is very unfortunate if that's true. I could also just be running into some epoxy that I'm digging into on the edge. I hope that's what's happening. And that's totally possible. Because the way that that thing is bonded to the sidewalls is with the epoxy buildup. I mean, either way, it's going to hold the motor. It's just not going to be so good if I have to take it out a bunch. Oh, yeah, baby. That thing is tight. Toit like a tiger. All right. Now, we wipe the tip. We keep it clean. We cap it. That way it can plug easier. <laughs> just kidding, guys. That's not what should happen, but that seems like what happens every time. You guys are going to get your first view in just mere moments. Oh, I'm so excited! I need to take down a little bit more material on the nose. Because as you can see, it's, it's bound up right now, so I'm going to have to either pull this out on the shaft, which is totally fine. Where am I hitting? Or am I hitting? Yeah, I'm hitting right now. So we may need to take a little bit of material down. Why does that look like it's wobbling all of a sudden? Uh, okay, so guys, what I can tell you right now is we probably got a little bit more work ahead of us, which you already knew that. And I may have mentioned earlier that I'm going flying this afternoon. So at this point, we got a little bit of work ahead of us. But for now, that's probably pretty close to the way it's going to look. There might be a minor deviation here and there. I wish that this nose cone was at the same exact pitch of the body. But I don't know if I'm just getting a little too picky all of a sudden. Wait. Let's put it down so you guys get a look at it. Like I said, we probably get a little bit of work ahead of us, but this will at least, this will be really similar to what it's gonna look like when it's done. Like I said, the details, the details are still coming. It looks like we're not gonna hit the canopy at all, which is awesome. 
not with the leading edge of the prop. It's, I swear, it looks like it's wobbling. That's very not cool. But like I said, I'll have to work that out. I'm not sure why it's even hinting at wobbling. It wasn't wobbling on the bench at all. Probably because it was pushed back further. We'll have to trim a little bit more material in that case. But for now, guys, we're getting so close I can taste it. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.